Hello everybody, it's SID Matt Haven here today, and I, I've, I, I've been sitting here for like 10 minutes, just staring at this. I, I, I have no words, um, you know, today's going to be really specific. I'm going to go over a lot, um, I only got one replay to show off. And it's the best replay I have in the tank. Don't get me wrong, today was kind of an off day, but at the same time, it was an off day because I got really angry that it was brought into the game this way. <sighs> yeah, we're not, we're not going to do take two. We're, we're going to do it like this. You guys are going to see my reaction to it. You're probably already here that I'm already dreading doing this to begin with. Because I am, I am, I I am so disappointed with how this turned out. The Death Chariot, the Tier Eight Chinese, a literal reskin of the 112. Sure, it's got 460 Alpha. Sure, it's got um, a skin, but the fact is, it has all the cons of the 112. All the cons, none of the benefits, every single con, plus a couple more added to it. The only benefit it has, big gun. But it's not even a big gun. So, since, uh, actually, you know what, before we even do that, let's, let's, let's do this instead. Okay, my biggest problem with these tanks, I can go to the 112, I can take a look at this. That's a 122. It tells you exactly inside the menu. Problem is, uh, the Death Chariot. We got a 460 alpha. We got a three second aim time. We got a 0.4 dispersion value, I believe. Yes, 0.4. It is literally the same characteristics of another tank, the Skoda T56. They even have the same module damage at 180 module damage. Okay. And my biggest problem about this is, is that it's not even a 130 millimeter gun. This is against a 40 millimeter plate on the um, MTLS 1G14. This is a tier 4 tank, 330 hit points. So if he does pin, it's going to be a one hit. Um, but the track on the front of it is 43 millimeter stick. If you do the math, 130 should be, should be able to go through a 43 millimeter plate. And right here, going to show off the armor. That's 43 millimeters. If we were to take the Skoda, this would go right through it without any problem. And up next, we're going to be going against 40 millimeters of armor, which, I mean, without a doubt, it should go through because it's a 122, and you only need 41 millimeters of armor on the side for 122s to be able to overmatch. But the fact is, I had to take the time out this morning to be able to find out the caliber of the gun of this tank. I actually had to do it for all three of the new Halloween tanks. And I'll tell you now, all three of them have disappointed me. Every single last one of them, I just don't recommend them at all. They are inferior compared to their counterparts. And jumping back to the game, it, it's, it's just so many problems with them bringing in tanks and not adjusting them correctly. Uh, let alone literally just putting a reskin on a tank and calling it good. This is a review, by the way, of the Def Chariot. I I really, really wanted to like this tank. I really did. You have no idea. I love the 112. But the problem is, it is made in such a way that it's not made to go against 10s. And, you know, let's go ahead. Let's dive into some statistics and I'll, I'll go over all my reasonings for it. Because... Personally, I want to like it, but the only way I can like it is that it needs a massive rework, and it's only been out since Tuesday. Um, Thursday, today, the day that I'm recording this, uh, Thursday the 14th of October, um, is the day I played, because for the first two days that, that it was out, there was a turret bug, a really bad one. And there's a content creator out there. I'm not going to name who it is because I honestly can't remember. I just heard this from someone else who watched the video. 
that they were talking about since the traverse speed of the turret is slower than the hull that it causes that that no it's not that's not how addition works addition is like if your hull speed is 40 and your turret is 20 then if you're rotating the hull with the turret then if depending on the terrain you're on whatever the traverse speed is of the tracks is added to the turret traverse allowing you to rotate that turret at that degree angle so for instance your turret might be able to achieve 60 if you're doing a full rotation it, it doesn't work like you, you rotate and your turret's stuck in that spot just going backwards like i i don't know why it would do that because it's not supposed to it's not how tanks work in real life it just hurt my head okay desktop reviews problems disappointments okay this is going to be the 112 Right here. This is the all the statistics of the 112. Okay, 112, 175 standard pin, uh, 250 heat pin, 61 millimeters of high explosive. I've already gone over this tank instead of a past review, but we're going to be using this as a changeout to be able to take a look at the Death uh, Chariot, which, yeah, 208 standard pin, 250 heat pin. 61 high explosive, 460 alpha across the board, except for high explosives is 640. Uh, the 112 is looking at 530. It's not bad. Um, yeah, that's not bad at all. Jumping back to the Def Chariot. Uh, penetration, 208. Okay, not bad. That's a decent standard pin. However, um, let me know in the comments if you agree with this. 250 millimeters of heat pin is not viable anymore. It has slowly been power creeped to non-existent. Uh, 250 is, in my opinion, uh, the lowest of the low for uh, a tier A premium. Keep in mind, this was designed for a preferential matchmaking tank as well. The 250. So this was transferred from the 112, where you have your 175, 250. This is preferential matchmaking. Um, penetration in my opinion going back to the uh, death chariot your module damage you're looking at 180 on the other one you're looking at 165 and this is what had me confused about the millimeter of the gun because it's it's not a 130 it's a it's a freaking 122 15 second reload aim time three seconds accuracy 0.42 um okay that's not bad it, it's got big alpha so it's gonna have bad accuracy bad aim time let's go to the 112 2.8 0.44, however, the aim time right here makes up for it if you run vertical stabilizers for your accuracy. Not to mention, the biggest problem about this tank that has got me irritated, Def Chariot. Let's come back. Max ammo speed, 800, 640, 800. I remember reading an article on the 112 back when it was first released on PC, and they stated that the ammunition speed is specifically to help balance the tank out that way it's not overpowered inside of its tier, and that it's meant to be a preferential matchmaking tank. That way it's not too much of a powerhouse. The 112, 800, 640, 800. So, this is one of the uh, downfalls to the Def Chariot that you're looking at, the shell velocity. This is outdated preferential matchmaking shell velocity. Uh, coming up, armor, 240, which is a lie. It's actually 300 millimeters in some places for effective armor and 240 on the outskirts. So we got our 250 on the inside with uh, nothing but spaced armor coming over. Hatches at 150 top armor. Maxing out gun depression. I went over this instead of a review for the tank. It becomes almost unpinnable even against heat rounds. Yeah, you're going to need to use a Jagger to be able to even hurt this thing with a heat round. It is amazing on the armor aspect. Plus maxing out your gun depression. Uh, where'd the hatches go? They're essentially gone. So, yeah, if you get this thing hauled down, it's a beast. Now, if you look at this here on PC, I don't know how well you guys can see that, but that clearly says, for penetration, 196. Coming back to console, 175. And these tanks were recently buffed as well. Um, but now that I see that the Def Chariot has been released, it makes sense on why they didn't want to buff the 112, because it would take away from people even consider buying the Def Chariot. Now, another critical thing about the Def Chariot is power to weight, 12.61. Coming back to the 112, we're going to come up 12.61. However, the 112 
has a massive advantage. It goes 45. And the way that this tank was designed, it can average 37 to 40, depending on the terrain that you are on and what you are using on the tank. A reverse, reverse speed at 15, fire chance 12%, terrain resistance 1.1, 1.2, 2.3. Not to mention your turret traverse speed at 26, and your track traverse speed at 26 at well, as well. Coming back to the Death Chariot. Your turret traverse is only 20. Six degrees left, and your track traverse is 24, which is two degrees left. Uh, reverse speed was also knocked down by a one, and you lost 10 kilometers on your top speed with the same engine at 580. So the 121-50LS. Uh, 121-50LS, yet the top speed is different between both these tanks. Uh, A220, A220, uh, the 112, 122, uh, D25TA, um, Reaper Scythe, that doesn't have a millimeter on it, okay, hold on, uh, 112, uh, Def Chariot, and it's still the same, 1.1, 1.2, 2.3, come back, 1.1, 1.2, 2.3, it's the same tracks, it's just got a different name, which is confusing for whatever reason, and uh, gun depression, 6 degrees, elevation, 17 degrees. This should be exactly the same. No effect there. 6, 17. Good. Uh, 45 rounds of ammunition. I do know that Def Jerry is sharing the same amount of ammunition at 45 rounds. Uh, view range on the Def Jerry at 380. 380. A lot of things are being shared across them without much of a problem. But the fact is... This is... A tier 8 release that just got dropped. And a lot of the statistics are the same to the 112. A lot of them. Not just that. Some of them are worse. The only advantage to this tank is its penetration and its alpha. But if the 112 would have got its 196 um, penetration buff, this tank would be inadequate. But I still believe this tank is inadequate. Because it has all the cons of the 112, plus some more. It doesn't have the top speed, which doesn't allow it to get into position as fast as the 112. Along with that, it still has all the same weak spots, which are considered tier 7 weak spots because they're 25 millimeters above the tracks on the under armor. So if you're flying into the tracks and they're slightly elevated trying to get some gun depression on you, you're going to track them, plus damage. 25 millimeters on top of the uh, engine deck as well, and on top of the entire hull. 50 mil 55 millimeters on top of the roof of the turret. And I, I'm just blown away that they add a tank in like this, and they take away the preferential matchmaking, and then give it a higher alpha and a little bit more penetration. It, it, there's two massive cons in the tank. Pref matchmaking is gone. Top speed was cut by 10 kilometers an hour. Reverse speed cut by one, which isn't a super big difference, but it's still a difference nonetheless. Yeah, you guys can probably just tell right away that I I just, I can't agree with it. it there's only a couple ways to balance this thing and make it actually better than the 112. Because by this point, I'm going to recommend the 112 because of preferential matchmaking and 33 millimeters less on your standard pin. Your premium rounds are exactly the same, the same shell velocity across the board. What's the benefit of playing the Def Chariot? The 460 Alpha? I'd rather have the top speed. I would. It makes the difference. Oh, not to mention, I would also have the ability to never see a single tier 10. Some of you probably just tried to argue with me that you would prefer the Alpha. Never seeing a 10 is a massive difference. Let's go ahead and take a look at this replay. Top tier uh, against a couple of Tiger 2s and a Progetto 54. Now, uh, jumping into it, I actually want to talk about the ways that they can fix this tank. One of the biggest? Remove the Under Armour weak spot underneath the tracks. Buff it to 40 millimeters, Making it to where only 122s can damage underneath there. Um, shell velocity increase. Standard round should be 1,000 meters. Premium rounds should be bumped up to 800 meters and high explosive. They can be literally dependent on what they want to do. If they want to bump it up to 1,000 or leave it at 800. Either or, 
it's totally fine. But the standard rounds at 800, you can fill it. Not just that, the heat rounds at 640 meters a second, you can really fill it. Not just that, um, during the time I was playing the Death Chariot, the camera felt really off. Um, there's moments inside of a lot of tanks whenever I fire my gun, it kind of feels like it's right next to my reticle. But firing out of the Def Chariot feels like my barrel is 10 feet to my right whenever I pull the trigger. And it's really disorienting to see my shell coming in from the far right. It almost gives me an idea that I might have an ally right next to me, but it's actually my shell flying downrange. I don't know if that's something to do with the shell velocity or the way that they implemented the tank into the game and moved the camera a little bit too far to the left. Um, I'll have to do some further testing on it to let you guys know if it's affecting close quarters combat and changing the way the position looks and we're trying to peek a corner or not. So I'll leave a pinned comment down low after I do some testing in the tank, which more than likely will not be until Saturday night. Because after this video, I'm going to be going to bed because I've got to take... Uh, I, I'm a PA tomorrow, so that's going to be fun. Now, the Death Chariot... Probably one of the best ways to fix this thing. Give it back its top speed. Give it back its 45. You know. Um, along with that, the module damage, the alpha, everything else, the fact that I had to test to find out the caliber of the gun for it to be a 122 was a bit depressing to see the module damage and the alpha. The reason why? Well, 130s can overmatch 43 millimeters plates. There's not a lot of 43mm plates in tier 8s, 9s, and 10s, but there are some. They are rare and far in between, but the fact is, it is a weak spot that you can take advantage of. And with the way that they have this tank put together, not telling you the, uh, like, it, that it's a 122, kind of gives you the false assumption that the only other tank that you can compare it to is a Skoda T-56 that has an actual 130, and can overmatch those very specific plates, which I do take advantage of inside of it. It's very rare, far in between. I keep on forgetting what tanks they are, but whenever I see them pop up, I know where to shoot. For instance, Leopards. Um, other side armor, you know, you're looking at 40 in some spots. Um, their top armor, maybe 30. There's a lot of tanks in the game that just... Overmatch is probably the best way to do it. Now, talking about... The ways to fix it. The heat round. Specifically, the heat round. 250 is not enough. Someone that's watching is probably sitting there saying, well, what about the Skoda T56 um, 248 pin? Well, you see, the Skoda T56 has an AP round that can readjust by 5 degrees. Which means whenever it makes contact, it makes a good readjustment making its um, premium round equivalent to a standard round of a tier 9. Standard um, APCR, for instance, on the uh, uh, 257. Yeah, the object 257 tier 9 heavy. Uh, but with a little bit more readjust because it's not an APCR. Or maybe I'm wrong in that. Maybe it is an AP round. Not 100% sure, but it's equivalent to that round. Or it's also equivalent to the E75 standard round with 2 millimeters more penetration. Because 246 on that. Now, if they were to bump it up to 270 on the Def Chariot, it would make it a bit more competitive. Along with that, the accuracy, I'm not going to disagree with it. The aim time, I'm not going to disagree with it. Those are totally fine. But the fact is, the way that the tank is put together right now, it has every single con of the 112. And it goes against tier 10s. 208 standard pin may give you a couple extra shots that you can take against... Uh, tier 9s and Tier 10s to actually be able to penetrate a couple of shots. But the situations that the 112 ends up in, where it can barely penetrate the target sitting in front of it, the Death Chariot is also ending up in those same situations, even with the 33mm of additional penetration on its standard rounds. Because 250 is heat, that's kind of where the problem starts. Um, the reload, I think the reload's totally fine. Uh, the way the tank is played, it's just too slow. Um, I've invested at least 200 something matches inside my 112 and I love my 112. I actually believe the 112 is superior to this in almost every single way because it's got preferential matchmaking and it goes 45 with all the same statistics. 
a little bit worse gun handling, but essentially everything is the same. Now, I, I really don't know what to say about this thing. I, I've seen some videos talk like super highly of it, but honestly, the shell velocity just takes away from it. And for me, it just makes this thing really difficult to play. It's nice that it's here, but it sucks that they couldn't have just buffed the 112, gave it its 196 uh, penetration, and then came out with a skin for the tank and made that a Halloween tank, where you buy the Halloween version, you buy the skin, which is the Halloween skin for the tank, and then you can now use it inside of the mode. But instead, they had to release an entirely different tank, come up with some random statistics for it, and then throw it into the game in a state that I wouldn't even recommend it to new players, let alone recommend to play it non-stop throughout the year. Um, this is just one of those tanks that the only thing I can really recommend to do with it is you're a tank collector. And you're going to get it, you're going to play it for the two weeks that um, the Halloween event's going to be going on, because they're not going to do it all month long, it's only going to be a two-week thing. And then after that, what are you, you going to do? Uh, you're going to play it for maybe four or five more matches and realize that it's just, it's underpowered and that it's just going to get ran over nonstop because 250 heat pins not going to stop a tier 10 from just rushing you. You're going to consistently bounce off them. Not to mention E100s, they have 270 turret armor, 270 standard, well, 270 premium pin. You can go through his lower plate with that very consistently. However, 250, you're going to find yourself bouncing quite a bit. That 20 millimeters of penetration is a big difference. Not to mention the shell velocity and the fact that I haven't touched my remote so long, my screen went black. Tap. So, I'm going to be critical about this. The Def Chariot is an inferior version of the 112 in every single aspect. It has two major cons. One, mobility. Two, it versus tens. While the 112 will never see a tier 10 unless you're platooning with friends and just want to do it for fun. That is the only time a 112 will ever see tier 10. So, I, I don't know what to say about it, except for um, if you want to waste your gold on it, waste your gold because this is dumb and I don't even know why they added it in this way. It, there's so much more that they could have done to make this tank better and rather than that it almost seems like they just copied and pasted it and then went to the Skoda T56 and copied, literally copied the gun. Go look at the gun of the Skoda stock on the website and then go look at the gun on this and get ready to be surprised. Seriously, it looks like a copy and paste. Where they just took a Skoda T56 gun and threw it on a 112. And didn't even give it a better heat round. I would much prefer the Skoda's premium round on the 112 than 250 heat pin. Because at least that AP round can actually pin tier 10s consistently. While 250 heat, you can bounce consistently. Other than that, you guys, I have no idea what to say. Um... A little bit disappointed that it's 9,000 gold and for 3,000 more you can get preferential matchmaking. You can get 47 top speed with a power terrain. Um, I actually don't even know what the reload is of this tank right now since they buffed Born Leader. And uh, more than likely, I'll probably play my 112 a little bit longer because I enjoy my 112 quite a bit. And speaking of which, while I'm waiting, actually while I'm just monologuing, uh, tier 8, heavy, Chinese, uh, my 112, I have quite a bit of matches played inside this thing. Keep in mind, I enjoy it. 297 matches inside my 112. Uh, rank, 299 out of 2,237 people who are registered. Uh, 7 kills is my top, and the last time I played it was 8-11-2022. So, about two months ago. Uh, from the time of recording this, this is the last time I played my 112. And more than likely, that's going to be getting updated tonight, right before I go to bed. Because 
I like I like my 112. However, do I like the Def Chariot? No. Someone said I should do it first because it's right now the most sought after tank. And I would rather recommend the 112. So I'm going to leave the 112 review inside the uh, description of this video. It's not there. Just yell at me. I'll, I'll get it there. But I, I just can't recommend the Def Chariot. I, I think it's beyond bad. It has all the cons of the 112. And it doesn't even have preferential matchmaking. Sure, it's got a better gun. Kind of. 70 more alpha. 33 millimeters more pin. However, if you can't pin your target, you gotta rely on the heat. And the heat is definitely inferior. So, you guys have a great day, afternoon, night, uh, whatever time it is for you. Um, if you guys like the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Seriously, leave me your opinion. I I think I might need something to read over and someone to calm me down because this has me livid. I am angry about this. The fact that the, they said that they're not going to be selling reskins and it feels like they just sold a rip-off reskin. I am livid about that. Probably totally can tell by the sound of my voice throughout the entire video. I am livid that they would do this. I mean, they already debuffed the Caliban, well, nerfed it, and now they they basically buff nerfed the 112, but the, it's it's a nerf that's beyond nerfs. Imagine the 112 getting its um, penetration bumped up and removing preferential matchmaking in exchange for that penetration buff. Would you be irritated? Because that's what the Def Chariot is. Alrighty, guys, I gotta I gotta stop this before I'm done playing. Because, I mean, I spent 200 bucks today. I bought Blade the pack. I bought me the pack. And I'm just like, why? Why? Just, it's stupid. Alrighty, um, I might do the Astrons next. Um, but that won't be until probably Sunday. And then the Arachnid, I'm going to spend some time on that. Cause it's, it's a cool concept, but you converted a heavy to a medium. I, yeah, just, it, it, whatever. I'll, I'll catch you guys later. I'll catch you in the next one. Uh, hopefully I'll be calmed down by then.